Hey, how's everyone doing today? So in today's video, we're going to do a quick rundown on what accessories, what stuff you might want to have for the analog pocket. So this is more geared towards some of the new first time analog pocket owners who are just getting their pockets. So congrats to everyone who's getting it soon. I'm happy for everyone who can play with this. It's an awesome device that I'm sure many people will be able to enjoy. So without further ado, let's get into the video and I'll just show you all the stuff that I have and some of the stuff that are bonuses that you might want to pick up too because they look pretty cool with it. But without further ado, let's get into the video. But first, one thing, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you very much, everyone, and let's get into the video. All right, everyone. So here we are. Here is the pocket. And you know, one of the first things I would always recommend, and it's just not just for just the pocket itself, but anything really your switch steam deck uh, iphone android any any device that has a nice expensive screen i would recommend a screen protector now i know the analog company screen protectors will cost you an arm and a leg if you account for shipping and depending on when it ships that might, no, that might take forever by itself so what you'll see on the screen right now is I would recommend the this one here, the glass uh, screen protector. They're very good. I've used them for almost all my electronic devices. I have no complaints with them. And back onto the pocket, you can see here, it looks really well. I have no issues. It blends in very good. So I'd recommend that screen protector. And one of the other things you're gonna need to pick up too is you're gonna need a micro SD card. Now I have here one from Microsoft. Let me see if the camera can focus and it's kind of small. Yeah, I got a 64 gigabyte one. I feel like that one is perfect at the moment. I'm sure depending on cores, yeah, I might need to pick up something bigger. But right now I have plenty of space on the 64 gigabyte and I still have, I'll have plenty of some and I have a lot of games on this. So I need to say that is a win for me. Now, one of the other things is you're gonna need a case. So one of the ones that I have here is a pretty good case. Uh, it's gonna be this case right here. Now I've used this case so just for quick travels to and from work occasionally if I don't wanna bring my other case. But I'll put it up on the screen. It's not that expensive, it's pretty good. It's not crazy. Gives you adequate protection. Has a pocket right here where you can stuff. Let's walk right here. Like here's a game right now. You can fit one, two, probably three Game Boy games, and you can probably fit more Game Boy Advance games as well. So this is a very good case for a low price. Now there are plenty of other cases you can have as well. There is a Pelican case that I've seen people modify. Um, you can get stuff on Etsy. There's a whole bunch of cases you can get. This is just my personal pick. Now, another one that I use most of the time is my water fuel case. Now, let me just move this back a little bit. Now, the water fuel case, it's a very good case. It has very good feel to it, and it has a pretty good amount of space. I had more Game Boy games there, and, you know, you can I stuffed a screen cleaner right there as well. And it's, it's pretty cool. I, I, honestly, I like their products. I've had it for the PS Vita, or my Steam Deck. So I've had it a good amount of times. It has a nice mag magnetic closing. And I'll pop it up on the screen right now just so you can really check out the site. And just from the site alone, it is a little on the expensive side. But I personally feel like if you're going to spend over $200 on the pocket, it doesn't hurt to have an expensive case either. But I totally understand that, you know, you can, the analog pocket itself costs a lot of money. But um, you look at the inside too, it has some nice felt on the inside. I think it's felt, I believe, but it's really soft. I have had no issues with, with this case. I personally like that. Now, back to the pocket itself. Also, just on a quick note, I don't really expect this video to be going crazy long. Uh, this is just a quick quick like you know 101 stuff that I have for the pocket itself now here's something else you might want to pick up as well I have a 65 watt charger here this is one of my extra ones that I use to charge it on the go this charges it nice and fast I have no issues with the charging time with this this one is from uh, Anki but you can use anchor anything 65 watt you'll have 
no problem. Uh, 20 watt, I believe, is also good. If you go any, any uh, smaller than that, you're going to notice substantial charging time difference. So the higher, the better. Just keep that in mind. And they're getting pretty cheap nowadays, too. Uh, another thing you might want to pick up. Now, you don't necessarily need to pick up something as strong as this. This is a power brick. This is a 100 watt power brick. And I use this for a lot of different things, just from my Mac Air to my uh, Steam Deck. Looks like it needs to be charged, but um, this charges the Steam Deck very well, charges my Mac Air. Uh, my Asus laptop is a hit or miss. If it's not on, it'll work. But this is very good. This one has USB-Cs on it. Um, I highly recommend this, especially if you have uh, higher, higher power devices. But you can also just go for a standard Anchor power bank. I have a couple of those, and they work just fine. I those are perfect. They're small. They're good on. A, they're good on the fly. So totally would recommend that as well. Just any power brick, to be honest, would be very good, helpful. The one I just showed is very good for, very good for the Steam Deck as well. Now, that being said, uh, let's put something on real quick. There you go, Lion King. Just to just to keep this going on in the background. All right, cool. <laughs> there we go, Lion King. Now, one of the other things, now this is gonna be more on the bonus section uh, for you guys, because now with Open FPGA, it's not as a necessity, but it's still very useful if you like real-time clock games like Pokemon. But I've also heard that that might be coming to the cores as well, so this will make it a little redundant as well. Here is an easy flash. Now this one works better for me uh, personally, than the EverDrive, because that one gives me issues because I have an older model, but these are great as well. One of the big benefits is the real-time clock on these. Uh, that is a huge benefit. That's honestly the biggest benefit at the moment. But another, another good benefit is you can just take this out and pop it into your original Game Boy and continue playing. You can't do that with Open FPGA. You need to take the game out. It's a little more complicated. But here you can just play it on all your devices. Same thing with the EverDrive GBA Mini. Same exact concept that that uh, <laughs> that real-time clock is a big one there. Now the Easy Flash does have some advantages, and uh, this is something people want me to revisit again. Please let me know. I don't mind revisiting those those topics. I've covered them before in the past. Another little bonus one here is a single flash uh, game. This one I believe has at the moment. I think it is Pokemon Prism. These are awesome. This is in a boxy crystal, uh, sorry, boxy pixel case. Uh, this is also aluminum. Of course, it's a little dirty because I haven't played this one in a while. Let me just clean it real quick. And if people would like me to revisit this again, I don't mind talking about it again. I do like these single, single flash cards. They're pretty cool. There are ways you need to change the games out. You can use GB operators. I think that's the biggest one you can use at the moment. So I'm very happy about that. But these are also great because uh, this one specifically has a real-time clock. Obviously, it does not account for daylight savings time at the moment. But it works very good. No complaints there. I highly recommend single flash cards if you want to get the original feels of playing with the cartridge. Now, I wish I could talk a little bit more to to, for example, the adapters, but mine have yet to arrive, and that might be for some time. I will hold off on the dock talks as well because I don't have the dock. I'm still waiting for that as well, which is <laughs> another sore topic by itself. But we all know how analog operates, so they take, you know, it's, it's a little bit slower for, for analog to do anything. So, but that's, these are also optional, mostly because of the open FPGA and just the capabilities of that. But right now at the moment, you don't have stuff like real-time clock, so it's not gonna be the same thing. But just being able to play these games on open FPGA is amazing. Now I recommend Pocket Updater. I cannot stress that enough. Pocket Updater is gonna be your best friend for these cores. They will do everything for you minus the ROMs. That you're gonna have to figure out on your own, and I, I'm sorry I cannot help you on that, but I'm sure you can. You can. You'll do just fine in looking it up. Google will be your best friend on that one. But 
it is amazing what you could do with these cores, the amount of games you can play. Let me tell you, you'll have a blast. Um, it is a difference playing a hardware emulation versus soft emulation. So there is a difference and you'll notice it just more by the accuracy. That, But that being said, it's amazing. You don't have to get an EverDrive or something like that. I like how you even get that logo. You didn't even get that logo playing the uh, playing it off of the analog pocket itself. So that part is pretty cool. Okay, here is another optional. It is not a mandatory, but it is still cool to have. Here is the uh, Nintendo DS Rumble Pack. Not obviously you don't need it, but it is pretty cool to just be able to pop in a Game Boy game. Uh, let's do what was a good one that always used it. Uh, let's see, where is it? Hopefully, I have Perfect Dark because that's the one that would use it. Uh, let's see. There is that Perfect Dark. That is Perfect Dark. So, the cool thing about this is I don't know if I had to put it first is that. With this rumble pack, you'll actually get the rumble feature that was initially uh, done with the game. So I have Perfect Dark, and it's a great game. I played it when I was a kid, and you get all the rumble features without having to keep placing the little AAA battery on it. But that being said, it's not a necessity. It's fun to play with. It's fun to have. It's a nice little gimmick, but it's not a necessity. So cool, though. I gotta say that. I like this is the exact. I was able to rip the exact uh, save too. Let's see if it works if I had to do it first. Let's see. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it. You have to get hurt first. Oh. You hear that? I'm getting hit. It's working. <laughs> it's cool. Again, it's just a nice little thing to have. So, that's another optional. Here is another optional you might want to have. For the Pokemon fans out there. This is a wireless adapter. I'm sure most Pokemon fans who, from the GBA era already know about this. Now, the, in order to get this to work, you're going to have to remove these little pins here. So this was initially how you would click it to the Game Boy Advance. This is how it hold it in place. You need to remove those in, in order to get it to work. Now, you can get these on eBay for like, you know, cheap, not too expensive, maybe $20 at most. And then you'll have to do the... The, uh, the modifications yourself. But that's the only way you're gonna get it to work because this is in the way, you can tell. But it does work perfectly fine. And maybe I'll make another video on Pokemon trading if that's what people wanna see, just a quick run up on it. But it is pretty cool, I recommend it. This will make your life a lot easier. The cables sometimes suck, but hey, what are you gonna do? Okay, and for my last optional, uh, yep, this is gonna be my last optional, I have Pokemon, no, sorry, not Pokemon, Game Boy Camera. Now, this is a cool little thing. I recommend it just because it's fun to play with. You don't have to. This is definitely an optional one. It just looks really good on the analog pocket. It just You just see things better. Start it up. This is the same one that I used in the beginning. This is how I saw myself. Shoot. As you can see, there I am. And there's the, there's the camera. So, it's... Pretty good, obviously. This is gonna be grainy, but like you can change the contrast. There you go. You can mess around with it if you want. Keep it right in the center just so everything's the same. Mess around with the brightness. It's pretty cool. Now, one of the other things that I would like to mention is that eventually analog is gonna have the option for you to be able to take the pictures from here and pull it the same way you can from GB operator. That makes it pretty cool. A cool little thing you can just use and save it on your computer. Now, if you have GV Operator, you can do the same thing. You just pop it in and you can download all the pictures. So that's also another option. GV Operator is also another cool thing to have. It's definitely not a necessity. It's good for you to back up your games from there and you can bring it onto the pocket. So GV Operator is another good one to have or any other Game Boy cart, cart flasher. But GV Operator, personally for me, I like that one the best at the moment. But there are some other good ones too. But... But that being said, thank you everyone for watching. This is just a quick 101 on, on the analog pocket. The stuff that you might want to have. It's all good stuff. Let me see. And the memories, obviously. Um, that's really in terms of accessories and stuff you might need. Uh, there are so many things you can do internally with it. 
obviously the open fpga you can check out the memories check out my past videos as well i've talked about a lot about these features gb studio was a big one when back before open fpga happened and this was how you would play game boy games and game boy color games you would have to essentially you know patch it good thing we don't have to do that no more it's much easier now with the open fpga but all right everyone thank you for watching please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one